Are you alright guys? Welcome to the June edition of the Small Space Gardening Collaboration. And this month it's all about pests and how we deal with the little... Cut! Pam said no swearing. Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome to the June edition of the Small Space Gardening Collaboration. And this month it's all about the pests we get on our gardens and how we deal with the little varmints. That's better. <laughs> Just a quick reminder before we get into it, there's plenty of other channels on this uh, collaboration. Go and check them out. Some fantastic information and I've learned quite a bit, I'll tell you. Um, check them out and uh, check the playlist as well. It's all there. It's in my description below, okay. So where do we start then? There are so many pests. <laughs> um, let's start with slugs. And I'm gonna concentrate mostly on my veggie pod, although we will move around a bit because not all of the pests are in my veggie pod. So slugs. Now, in the UK, there are, I believe, around 40 varieties of slug, and only eight of them eat live vegetation, juicy green stuff, you know what I mean? All the rest eat dead vegetation, some eat worms, and some, the leopard slug, eats other slugs. So I've got to the stage now where I don't really like killing them. I've stopped using slug pellets in general. I don't mind putting slug pellets in a pot or in something like this because it's, they're not going to get out. There's not going to be many slugs coming in to get killed, if you know what I mean. They're there as the last resort for me. But what I do is I use either Vaseline or even better, some sort of vapour rub. Now this is the stuff that oh, you remember from your childhood. You could always tell the kid at school who had a cold because he stank of menthol and camphor. What's it? Camphor? Eucalyptus. Turpentine cedar wood and that sort of thing and it does remind me of school actually and i'll tell you another quick tip with this as well if you put a little blob here and here and a little bit on your wrists and any other sort of pressure points when you're up the uh, allotment or any garden it deters flying midges and things like that little bitey insects they smell it and they don't come to you it does work to a certain extent <laughs> it won't stop the determined ones but and it smells okay anyway. So what I do with this, I'm gonna point you downwards a bit. Slugs don't like climbing by the Vaseline or the vapor rub. So you put a smear of it on the legs, all round, like so, and they won't climb past it. The last lot's worn off. Now, to be fair, the last lot was put on quite some time ago because my veggie pod is on gravel. And the slugs don't like climbing over this gravel anyway. So it's not too bad. But, like I said, it stops flying insects as well. So, you know, they get whiffed out. They don't like it. Now, the other thing I use is a product called Grazers. Now, this is Grazers. This is uh, the G2. Effective against slugs and snails without harming them. And this is what I like about the, uh, the Grazers products. It doesn't kill them. What it does, basically, it puts a nasty taste on the leaf. So Mr. Slug comes along and goes, munch, munch. Oh my God, that tastes like, and moves on. Now, the one thing I'll say about this, yes, it works on adult plants. It's not very good on seedlings because the slugs had a bite of the seedling and it's a good chance the seedling's not gonna survive anyway. Um, this one's for slugs, like a slugs and snails, like I say. It's, a, it's got high calcium, I believe. And it's a simple thing of spray wherever the slugs are, you know, and they just have a bite and they don't like it. And the good thing is um, it's, the crops are uh, immediately harvestable. Um, repeat after every 10 days, seven to 10 days or after heavy rain. And there'll be a few more of these popping up because I quite like their products. Okay, one more product you can use against um, slugs as a deterrent is this. Now this is a mulch and it's called Strolch. And basically, it is very finely chopped straw, and it advises you to handle it with gloves on. <laughs> um, it's mineralised. It's got a bit of iron in it. And as you know, the modern slug pellets have um, iron phosphate or ferric phosphate in. I found it to be very effective, but not um, totally effective. And the times it's not totally effective is when it is soaking wet, and they seem to be able to climb across it a bit easier. Um, it's good stuff. I've not used it in the veggie pot. I'll just put this here to show you for now. Okay, one more thing. Um, some people use slug pellets. I don't like to, as you know, I just told you. Um, but what I've seen people doing is they get the slug pellets and they, I haven't got any to do, but they scatter them everywhere. Effective way to use slug pellets is to sprinkle them 
around the outside of your crops because the modern ones have got a lot of bran in them and slugs love bran. So if you pour them in the middle of your crops, they smell the bran and the slugs that aren't in there are gonna, oh, what's that smell, oh, bran? So they go in there and they go along and think, oh, juicy beetroot, I don't want dried bran, I want fresh beetroot. So they start eating that instead. So the best way to use slug pellets is to put them around the outside of your beds, not in your beds. Hope that helps, guys. Okay, you would have seen the, some call them cabbage whites. You would have seen the white butterfly here in the UK. They're the large white and the small white. They're the ones that devastate um, brassica crops. Um, I've got netting. Netting is all very good as long as the leaves aren't touching the net because the butterfly will come along and lay its eggs through the net. So you've got to be careful. These are here, this net is mostly here to stop cats, but we get all the cats in a minute. But again, um, grazers do a spray. This is a G3. Effective against damage from cabbage white, I mean, large and, large and small white butterflies, capers and aphids. Now we'll get onto aphids in a minute. Um, again, simple spray. And then make sure you go under the leaf as, underneath on top of the leaf as well. The best deterrent, or the best way, sorry, the best way to stop caterpillars is to look at your leaves now and again and just look for that little line of yellow um, eggs. Works, but it, you know, if you've got a lot of brassicas, it can take a while, but uh, prevention is better than cure, eh? So a little bit of squirt. I don't know if the butterflies eat it. I don't think the butterflies actually eat it. Again, non-killing. Um, and it's friendly to all other wildlife as well, apart from the, uh, the things it's designed to uh, deter. Okay, what's next then? Um, well, cats. Let's talk about cats. I don't particularly want to use these nets on my beds. Um, that top bed with the potatoes in, that's okay because the, the plants are dense enough. The cats don't get in there, but with that one there with the garlic, they'd be in there in a shot. And this one here, what I've done, I've put the shallots there to dry out to stop them climbing in and doing their business. But, as I'll show you down here, as you can see here, look, I put loads of trays upside down. Some cat's been in there, uh, moving them around and um, done his biz. So. And again, that's why that bed there has got netting over it for cats. Now what I have just bought, and I'll be back in a second. Yeah, what I have just bought is this one, um, cat and dog scatter granules. Stop some fouling. I think any hmm, that's word. any deterrent works until the animal gets used to it. I've used pepper dust for a week, they get used to it and they're back. I've used um, drinks bottles laid on their side full of water. They see the reflection, they get scared because of big eyes. They get used to it and come back in a week. I've used lion poo, they get used to it, come back in a week. You know where I'm going with this. So I'll use this for a bit but I'm going to have to do it somewhere where there's nothing they can scratch up like those carrot seeds. So that's cats. What's next? <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> right, I'm going to sit down for a minute. Before we get on to uh, aphid control, I'm going to talk about the life cycle of an aphid. Or <laughs> and this is quite amazing if you've never heard it before. All through the summer, um, an aphid produces females only. But when the weather starts getting a bit cooler in autumn, late autumn, she'll produce uh, a few males and females and they'll mate and they'll lay eggs and those eggs will overwinter. And in the spring, those little eggs will hatch and they'll be all female. And throughout the year or throughout the summer, spring and summer, those females will lay only females. But get this, <laughs> when the female lays a live female, that female is already pregnant with another female inside it. So there are three generations of aphid within one female aphid. And this goes on for um, between 10 and 30 generations of, of aphid through the summer. And then it gets to late autumn again and they, she starts laying males and females. But you think about it, you know, the, the baby inside the aphid is already pregnant. So who's got a chance, eh? So the ones they pop out the back end are already pregnant with two generations, so it's crazy. So what I do, um, if I've got aphids on brassicas, then I will use the grazers like we just talked about. 
doesn't kill them though, but I like to kill them. So what I'm gonna do, I haven't got a bottle with me. I left it up the allotment. Uh, I use a, a product called SB Plant Invigorator. It's a, it's a, it's a mode of contact one. It, um, it, it smothers the aphid in the liquid. A bit like the COVID virus. It breaks it down from the outside. They can't breathe properly and they die. Um, it's not organic, but I don't do organic. Organic doesn't mean nothing really. Um, the Ebola virus is organic. Um, <laughs> Um, this SB plant invigorate, it, it invigorates the plants as well. It feeds the plants as well as killing the, the pests, so it's quite good. It does white fly, which I'll talk about separately in a second, aphids, spider mite, mealybugs, scale pests, uh, scale insects, and psyllids. There's no resistance, it's a physical contact thing, so the, uh, the pest doesn't get used to it. Um, it's bee and bird friendly, which is great, and there's no harvest interval, so you can spray and then use it later on. It's also good with powdery mildew, but we're not going to talk about powdery mildew because we're doing pests rather than diseases this time. Now, whitefly, let's quick on the whitefly quickly. Whitefly, those little tiny horrible little things with triangular wings that when you touch a brass goes, wee cloud of snow. Do you know what I do with them? I use a handheld uh, vacuum cleaner. And I brush the leaves. I'll show you on the black fly behind me in a minute. And I just brush, uh, suck them up. And they're in there and they, if they haven't died from maceration, I just let them go somewhere else, like, you know. I'll show you a picture of the SB plant invigorator, but what you, I do, I buy the, uh, the bulk one, stick it in a sprayer and then spray the uh, plant. Right, let's have a quick look at what we got, eh? Okay then, two clues, you've got aphids, apart from the fact that you can see the black fly. You've got ants scurrying around and the ants milk the aphids, they take their honeydew. Now the trouble with the aphids, the honeydew drips onto the leaves below, and that's what causes that horrible black mould. The second clue is the deformed leaves, like this. There we are, look, covered in aphids. They're eating the spine of the leaf, and the leaf's deforming. Loads of them. Right, so what you do with this is spray all over both sides of the leaves. Cover the yeah, black fly, in this case black fly, green fly, white fly, whatever. Normally start at the top and work down, but you can't see that high, so. The last pest I really get is pigeons, but that's mostly up on the allotment garden. And again, there's a grazers for this. It's grazers G1. Um, pigeons, deer and rabbits. Don't like the taste of the leaves. But yet again, if they're small seedlings, they're gone before they decide they don't like the taste. So good on adult plants. And these are the, uh, the bulk containers. The little ready to use sprayers are dearer. So buy these and put them in your own sprayer. They do work, especially if you don't like her harming anything. Effectively used by farmers since 1999. I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys, and um, I hope it helps you with your pest control, you know. I've just noticed some uh, black fly on those beans over there, so I'll get on with that. Um, crikey. Catch you all again at the end of July for the next small gardening collaboration video. And don't forget to check out the other collaborators and view the playlist. Take care, guys. <laughs>